Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a homemade functional equation. We have f of x plus y equals x plus y multiplied by f of x multiplied by f of y all divided by xy. And by solving this equation we're going to find a function in the form of f of x that will satisfy this equation. So with functional equations, you know, there's not a set method, but there are a couple of different strategies, maybe not a couple, but a number of different strategies. And those strategies include replacing X and Y with different numbers, especially the special numbers include 0 and 1 and negative 1. And sometimes we tend to substitute something like Y equals X, Y equals F of X, X equals negative f of y, so on and so forth, depending on the situation, but it's a lot of trial and error, and unless you're really, really well-versed in functional equations, it's going to take a while to solve. Or if you've written the problem yourself, then you already know the solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a couple different things here, and let's see where this leads us. So first of all, uh, x and y cannot be replaced with zero as is, because it would make our expression undefined. So let's avoid using zero. But uh, we can probably try something like replacing y uh, and x with one, right? Let's see what that does. Uh, if you replace x and y with one at the same time, you're gonna get f of two equals one plus one, which is two times f of one times f of one divided by one times one, which is one. And from here, you're gonna get something like this, f of two equals 2 times f of 1 squared, okay? This may or may not be very meaningful at this point, but this might help you find a pattern and generalize. So if you do the same thing with 2 and 2, obviously, you're going to get something like this, f of 4 equals 4 times f of 2 squared, but then you would have to divide by 2 times 2, which is 4. And the 4 is going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with something like this. Okay, so you can go on and on with this, uh, and this may lead you somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where, but uh, you can definitely give it a try. But I'm not seeing any immediate solutions from here. Let's go ahead and do the following. What happens if we replace y with x? Let's go and check it out, because that's what we've been kind of we've been doing so far with 1, 1, and 2, 2. And if we do that, we'll get a more general expression, which is kind of nice because once you get a formula, then, you know, um, you can replace x with anything you want and you'll be producing all of these at the same time, pretty much. So f of 2x is going to be x plus x, which is 2x multiplied by f of x squared divided by x times x, which is x squared. So the cancellation of the 4 wasn't actually justified by getting the same number, but more like x squared equals 2x, because if x is equal to 2, that's the case, right? So it doesn't always happen. With 3, you're going to have a different scenario. You're going to have a 6 here, but you're going to have a 9 here. Make sense? Okay. So this kind of gives you a single equation. Let's see if we can replies, replace, not replies, uh, y with negative x. Okay, let's go ahead and do that down here. By the way, I'm not necessarily solving the equation. I'm kind of showing you how you can proceed. And by the way, th these may not lead to any solutions at all. But I'm just showing you the thought process of what I would be doing if I saw a problem like this. Okay, so with this equation, one more time, let's write it down. x plus y, f of x, f of y, and all of that is divided by xy. What happens if you replace y with negative x? Is that going to be uh, a good thing? Let's see. First of all, it's kind of problematic because it's going to give me f of 0, which I can't produce from here because I don't think I can uh, replace x and y with 0. But anyways, let's do it. We're going to get f of 0, and y equals negative x is going to give me a 0 here. And then 0 times anything else will be 0, so I can safely say that f of 0 is going to be 0 from here, as long as, as long as x and y are different from 0. So that's kind of nice because obviously we're going to have infinitely many values for which y equals negative x. So this kind of gives you an idea that f of 0 is going to be 0. So you might be thinking, could it be a linear function like f of x equals mx? Because this works with f of 0 equals 0, but 
you can just guess your way out, out of this. That's much more complicated. Anyways, so all of these efforts, as far as I can see, is not going to lead anywhere. Maybe there's a way to get out of this. And please uh, do share in the comment section down below. But I'm going to show you a completely different thing uh, that will actually work. That's how this problem has been designed. So let me rewrite the original problem and then proceed with the solution. Obviously, there's some uh, conditions for uh, you don't want x and y to be 0, so on and so forth. But let me go ahead and do the following. I'm going to divide both sides by x plus y because I see that x plus y is kind of weird on the right-hand side. It belongs on the left-hand side. If I divide by x plus y, I get this. And the right-hand side is a little bit simplified. So more balanced equation. Even though equations are always balanced, uh, visually this is more balanced. Great. Now, what can I do with this? So one of the things that you should hopefully be able to recognize is patterns. What do you mean by patterns? If you see something that repeats, not necessarily in the same form, but uh, kind of similar forms, and then it's a good thing. For example, with integrals, we do this, right? So suppose you're trying to solve uh, e to the power x squared times x dx. You're trying to integrate this. And if you can recognize that, hey, the derivative of x squared is 2x, so I can kind of turn this into a 2x, and then there you go. You got the function and its derivative. The on-chain rule, or just reverse the chain rule, I'll get the answer, right? This is going to be e to the power x squared. That's what I mean by patterns, but there are a lot of different kinds. So here's the pattern that we should be able to recognize here. By the way, speaking of patterns and recognizing patterns, I was kind of you know, playing with the chat GPT and see if it can produce some nice problems on different topics. And it did. And hopefully in a later video, I'm going to try to share that problem with you guys and uh, show you the solution. OK, anyways, that's another story. We'll talk about that later. So here's what I'd like to recognize. If I separate these two guys into kind of like a product, then I see the following. I kind of have a function, which is f of x divided by x. But I also see it being repeated with different variables. Like, for example, f of y over y is just this function uh, with x being replaced with y. And then, of course, this is also going to work with the pattern because all we're doing is basically replacing x with x plus y everywhere. So what is that supposed to mean? It just means that you can replace f of x over x with another function and you're going to have a really nice result. So let's go and replace f of x over x with gx or g of x. So this means uh, this is going to be g of y and this is going to be g of x plus y. Awesome. This equation is much more simple. But not only that, it also has some special properties. What, what are those special properties? This is actually one of Cauchy's functional equations. Of course, we had to say, hey, these functions are continuous, so on and so forth. Let's just skip that story part. But basically, under good conditions or under certain conditions, this is satisfied by an exponential function. What kind of exponential function? You might say, well, I'm just going to call g of x a to the power x. What happens is if you multiply a to the x times a to the y, you get a to the power x plus y, which tells you this is g of x, this is g of y, and this is g of x plus y. So this is the function that satisfies it. And guess what? It's equal to f of x over x, which I was looking for. So g of x equals a to the power x, which is equal to f of x over x. From here, we were looking for f of x, remember? And that can be written as x times a to the power x. So this is the solution under certain conditions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And apologies about the long uh, intro. I just wanted to show you uh, a thought process here. I hope you don't mind. And see you next time. Bye-bye.